For this video, we're going to make a simple DIY voltage booster and a manually operated one. Of course, you can buy voltage boosters. They're pretty cheap. You There's really no reason to make one other than for the fun of making one. So we have the uh, resistor here. This is a 100 ohm resistor. It's the absolute minimum resistance you would want to put 5 volts directly across it. We are going to run at literally a quarter watt if it gets the full 5 volts and uh, so it may run a little hot but this circuit we actually turn on and off quite often so it's not steadily running current. We're going to take a diode here and we're going to put the cathode to the same row as the resistor right there and uh, so this is going to actually reverse bias it for uh, most of the time and uh, we'll look at that coming up so now we come to the inductor I have a, a 10 millihenry inductor right here and we'll plug it in so that's two squares down and now we will take a capacitor here which is a I believe a 4.7 yeah it's a 4.7 microfarad capacitor so a small amount of capacitance it can be charged up to 50 volts though so I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not but uh, yep 4.7 microfarad can be charged up to 50 volts which is important because we're going to be boosting the voltage so we're going to need a lot more than five but we got plenty more than five so the positive side, it's an electrolytic capacitor, it is polarized, the positive side is coming to the inductor and then the negative side is being plugged to where the uh, diode is, right there. And so, what this is going to do, this is really it for the circuit. What this is going to do, I'm going to close the circuit, I'm going to make a direct connection to the uh, negative rail there and then I'm going to release it. So when I make a connection, we'll have current going through the resistor and through the inductor. It's not going to go through the diode because it is reverse bias right there. When I remove the uh, jumper, we'll see that coming up, the inductor is going to want to keep conducting current the same way that it was for a while. It builds up a magnetic field which collapses and so now it can go into the capacitor and then through the diode which would be forward bias because current's going to keep moving that way until the magnetic field runs out of energy. So now to measure that I have an oscilloscope here, pocket oscilloscope and we have the uh, plug up there that runs a cable to these two jumpers here. We're going to put them across the capacitor so that we can keep an eye on the capacitor voltage I have this jumper with an alligator clip that I'm going to just keep tapping. I'm going to plug that into the negative rail and I'm just going to keep tapping the inductor there. When we have a connection then there will be current flowing through the inductor to ground and when I release it the only current that will flow is whatever the uh, magnetic field of the inductor. So looks like we have a tiny bit of charge on the capacitor now. So each square is 2 volts. To uh, start off we can lower it to uh, 1 volt and the uh, breadboard power supply is on. And you can see as I tap it the voltage goes up. So of course this is a 5 volt power supply so it's pointless if we only go to 5 volts but uh, there's 8 squares on there so if it goes off the screen we just passed 7 volts and uh, so let's change this to 2 volts per square there now you can see it going down I think it's actually going down this oscilloscope should only have about uh, probably 1 million ohms of resistance this is a very small value capacitor so again this is not a practical circuit for uh, making a voltage booster so now remember each square is 2 volts we're one square up so we have 7 more squares we can go up to uh, 14 volts at the uh, very top but I can keep tapping this here and I'll hold it to kind of keep it from jittering and uh, 
faster we go, the higher up it would go. And then, uh, so let's see, that point there is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up. So we easily got to 10 volts. If we found a way to uh, rattle this faster, it would go up a lot more. But uh, you get the main idea there. So that's uh, really it. It's pretty simple if you have an inductor to capture the inductive kickback right there. Of course, the bigger the value of the inductor, the more current you put through it, the uh, better it will work. And if you have an oscilloscope that doesn't uh, discharge the capacitor as much, that's going to help too. So in any case, hopefully you still like the circuit. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.